Yeah, watch it. Uh, got the worst on the track. Set on the boards. Church. This is Lamar. Wow. Yeah, the statistics shows my ballistic flows in a rape with cake. My wit can't doze that. Spot can't tee them up. Uh, uh, O's. I'm so ready. I done packed my clothes. I'm so happy with no D. I done boys. I rock them gators more than good beat boys. I'm the real raw deal. Y'all just steal decoys like them duck hunters. Runners blowing whistles, making noise. It's official. Tell the missiles. I'm the dizzle. Flow sizzle. Flow sizzle. I'm off the hizzy busy sizzle. No, I got that hustle muscle for that green light like before break. No. What's up, Fight fans? It's the mighty mean Joe Frazier. You are now tuned in to Fist Physics. Yo, this is my first video back 2018. I've been going for quite a minute. Had a new uh, addition to the family come through. And just haven't had the time to be on top of it. But after YouTube threatened me a few times, cutting off my monetization abilities, I'm back. It's a new year. Let's talk about some boxing. All right. The most uh, anticipated fight, I think, coming up in the next couple of months, in my opinion, is going to be Anthony Joshua versus Joseph Parker. And, and you know what? Last year, there was talk about it, and the only sad thing about this fight is what it took for Parker to get a shot at Anthony Joshua. Now, I believe the split that was agreed to was 75-25 with... Parker coming over to the UK. I really got a triple check. Uh, didn't see anywhere where the venue was going to be. But I'm kind of feeling like Anthony is not ready to leave the UK for a fight. And even though Joseph Parker is originally from New Zealand, he's training and living out in Las Vegas, which right now is the mecca of boxing as far as the states go. So let's take a deeper look at these two individuals, and I'll give you my opinion about how this fight is going to turn out. Anthony Joshua, currently uh, ranked number one heavyweight, which I, I I really don't understand. You know what, and let, let's talk about that real quick. Boxing wreck. Jesus Christ, man. I don't know who's in charge over there at boxing wreck, but when I went on today, earlier this morning, I noticed that... Alexander Povetkin is currently ranked higher than Deontay Wilder, which I do not understand when Povetkin at this point of the game is a known cheater. He's tested positive for drugs in his system, performance enhancing drugs in his system on multiple occasions. But yet he and 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 because of this, he's he's inactive. He's been inactive for quite a while longer than 15 months but yet he's ranked number two behind Anthony Joshua I, I don't I don't even get boxing wrecking where they're coming up with these equations but uh back 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 to the fight at hand Anthony Joshua's currently 28 years of age standing at six foot six with the 82 inch reach his most notable win is coming against Vlad, uh, Vitaly Klitschko last year in a knockout in the 11th round, but even, and, and that, that looks good, you know, but Klitschko was, was way past his prime. You're talking about a guy who was in his forties, who had almost 70 fights. And this was, this was pretty much his second career because, you know, he's got the guy started off as a kickboxer. So you can give him a little credit for how he ended, uh, the Klitschko match. But really, more credit goes on Klitschko for not making it a boring fight and bringing it to the inside. And he actually dropped Anthony Joshua. I, I, even though I watched the fight, I can't remember off the top of my head how many times he dropped him. I think maybe only once. But the weird thing is, the next fight against a, a, a little-known guy by the name of Carlos Tackham, he struggles. People argue that the fight shouldn't have been stopped when it was. So, and he's, he's, he, he, I'm sorry, but he's a little questionable. Uh, he's still walking in with 20 wins, all by knockout. So he has a 100% knockout ratio. But besides Klitschko, there's really no notable names on, on this resume on why he should be ranked so high regardless. Uh, because of the Klitschko matchup, he is currently the IBF, IBO, and WBA champion. 
And he's expressed no interest in leaving the UK. And he, even when they were talking about this fight, and Joseph Parker was talking about a 60 40 or a, or a 65 35, Team Joshua with Hearns over there in the UK still weren't quick to sign this, uh, this uh, contract. Now, Joseph Parker, I mean, he's, he's a pretty good fighter. Let's take a look at his record real quick. He's 24-0 with 18 knockouts, 75% knockout ratio. He's 26 years of age, standing at 6 foot 4 with a 76-inch reach. Like I said, he, he does originally hail from New Zealand, but he's currently living and training out of Las Vegas. Uh, his most notable win so far in his career is against... Huey Fury, which he won a decision, and quite frankly, in my perception of that fight, he was not dealing well with the Fury jab, and both the Fury brothers have a great jab, great jab, but in my opinion, Parker wasn't dealing with that jab in the most efficient way, but he still walked away with the win, and also look at this, a couple of years back, Joseph Parker beats Carlos Tackham in a decision, goes all 12 rounds with the guy. Uh, Parker's most notable win, in my opinion, has to be against Andy Ruiz Jr., who was currently 29-0, and and they fought for a vacant uh, WBA belt or WBO. One of, one of these belts they fought for. But now this fight is going down March 31st, 2018. I've watched Parker for a while. He looks pretty good. He's, he's, he's a decent technician. Almost a kind of remind you of a much bigger, much slower Roy Jones, his style with his, his hand dropped out in the lead like that. He's not the biggest puncher, and it seems like he'll struggle against a guy with a, with a decent jab. Um, but this is a fight between two undefeated champions, and I do think that Joshua will beat Parker. I think uh, Joshua's just too big, too strong. And he'll eventually wear Parker down. But this is going to give us a chance to gauge really what Anthony Joshua's abilities are. Um, I also hope that this this fight is going to pave, pave the way for a Wilder Joshua fight. Because earlier that month, we're going to have uh, Wilder taking on Luis King Kong Ortiz, who is finally clean off the roids or whatever performance enhancing drugs he was taking so we're going to see that fight earlier in the month and then at the end of the month you're going to get the aj joseph parker fight and like i said I'm, I'm really looking for joshua to end this somewhere in the late rounds even though parker's a pretty good fighter i don't know how he's going to stand up to the power of joshua and I'm thinking he becomes overwhelmed as we go into the deep water and he'll eventually get stopped. Now, if Parker can beat Anthony Joshua, Parker's already expressed that he does not want a Wilder fight, which is so ridiculous how people are avoiding the guy Deontay Wilder when there's so many people on the Internet who talk bad about this guy. I've heard I've heard so many just hateful comments about Wilder and his style but when you check his resume, the guy's the real deal, man. He, he hits with a lot of power. He fights tall. He fights long. And he does it very efficiently. I, you know, I haven't seen a fight really where Wilder was drained or tired. Not like Anthony Joshua. And I'm sorry, I'm, not, I'm just not the, a firm believer. Uh, I'm not on the hype train, the Joshua hype train right now. Because look at this. Andre Ward beats... I forget his name. He beats the guy, you know, twice. And Andre Ward says, well, you know what? I'm a small guy. I moved up from 160 to 168 to 175. But I'm willing to walk in there and take on Anthony Joshua when I think I could beat him. That really should leave a lot of people feeling like there's something. There's something there that the more technical fighters see in Anthony Joshua that makes him a beatable fighter because he's so much heavier and stronger than a guy like Andre Ward, who's a forced 175, for Andre to say, you know what, I'll take that fight or I'll step out and retire, that says a lot. But tune into this fight. It's going to be, for at least the, the first quarter of the year, it's going to be one of the most uh, anticipated fights. 
between two young undefeated fighters. You know, I, I don't really get up and get all excited when we, we got a young champion taking, up, taking on like an old washed up champion. I don't really get up for those fights. But when we got two undefeated champions, yeah, I'm going to tune in. So tune in to this fight right here. I don't know what station is going to be on. Nine times out of ten, this is going to be an HBO broadcast. Because HBO has really lost a lot of fighters. And that, that's good for HBO if this is on there. And hopefully Wilder, Anthony Joshua in the future on HBO. All right, it's the mighty mean Joe Frazier. Tune in. I'm about to hit y'all with a few more. A couple of, couple of days here. All right, one.